Hello everyone, I'm back here with another Copperhead video and in this video I want to address the soft start circuit that is inside of Copperhead. For larger robots and higher voltage systems it's a good idea to have some sort of soft start. This can prevent your switches from prematurely failing and also help out some of your electronics and other connectors and things like that. So let's start first by showing you why a soft start circuit is even necessary. I'm not going to go into a ton of details about this because the last thing you want is someone that has a degree in psychology explaining electricity to you. But generally speaking, the higher the voltage you have, the larger of an air gap it can travel. So static electricity, really high voltage, you touch something, you see that zap across it. And as you start going down to much lower voltages, they can't really you know, go across that air gap. So you don't really see that um, spark or that zap as much. So when you run into something like um, a bot like Copperhead that's running a 12S system or 12 cells of battery, each cell being you know, roughly 4 volts, it's like a 4850 volt system inside of here. When you make a connection between two points, right before you make that connection there's a little bit of a zap or a little bit of a pop. So um, if you, you know, are testing this out on the workbench and you just kind of connect two connectors together, you'll see a pop and I'll show you that later. And that little pop, it's fine, I guess, but ultimately what's happening is the electricity is jumping that air gap and it's pitting out that connector to some degree. So if you have a switch, like um, we have a couple of these Wayachi switches, a Wayachi switch basically works by having two plates and then a screw that goes through those plates or pushes down between those plates and the two plates make contact and you know it's just a normal switch at that point. And what's happening is if you get that pop or that zap, if you do that enough times, if you're switching this robot on and off and on and off over the years, you're going to pit out that connector and the connector is not going to work the same way or it could be intermittent. And that's what happens. These switches end up failing basically because of the turning on and turning off or not so much the turning off, but the turning on. And the reason that this is happening is because everything on the robot is effectively on all your ESCs are you know ready to go and so when you turn that switch on it is just a huge inrush of current you know granted nothing's actually moving but all the capacitors and everything inside the electronics are being charged instantly so there's just a really quick and sudden inrush worth of power into all these components and that's what creates that little gap that little pop and that is damaging to the connectors to the switches and to some degree the electronics. To simplify this concept even further and to give you maybe a poor analogy, um, think about every morning before you go to work. You know, you wake up, you brush your teeth, you go in the bathroom, you know, have a cup of coffee, do whatever you do. And you know, you kind of slowly wake up and then you drive to work and boom, you're good. Well, think of it if you had your bed in your office and a foghorn went off and you just woke up out of the bed and started working instantly. That's a pretty shock to the system. It's a pretty um, quick and abrupt way to start things. And that's kind of what's happening here in some sense with the electricity is you're basically just hitting on and everything is just boom, zapping on instantly. So you kind of need a cup of coffee, the morning newspaper, things like that. And that's essentially what a soft start circuit, soft start circuit. I'm gonna mess this up a lot soft start circuit does is it basically slows down that flow of electricity initially, lets everything gradually come up to um, the right voltage, and then you can turn everything on safely. So let's go over to some um, things that I have set up and I'll show you what that pop looks like and then I can kind of show you what it does to connectors. Here's a little project that I've been working on. It's just um, a little um, test setup to play with some of these um, hoverboard hub motors. And I've got like a Trampa ESC here, just this uh, Vesk ESC. And um, this is just kind of half of what you're seeing. So I have a um, nice big hole battery over here. This is a five amp hour 6S. And I have another one over there. So this system is running 12S right now. So what's going to happen is I'm going to plug this in. And you're probably going to see a spark or a pop. It doesn't always happen the exact same way, but let's just see what it looks like. Oh. That is a good one. And you probably saw a little um, bit of light even coming through the casing right there. And what's happening is I'm plugging this battery in and all the electrons are just dumping into this whole thing instantly and it's creating this nice little pop. And that's what we're trying to avoid because over time it's gonna wear out that connection point. So let's see if we can get it to do it again. It might be um, already charged up. Yeah, a little bit less. 
So let's um, take a closer look at these connectors because these I've been using for a lot of testing so we can kind of get an idea of what it looks like inside the connection. So here is a look at one of the ends of the connector. I've got my uh, macro lens on here, so it's a little difficult to get everything in focus and in frame, but you can see right there on the connector there, and a little bit over there, you can see just kind of that pitting out of the connector. So what's happening is when this is plugged into the other one, that little zap or that little arc is just pitting that out and degrading that connection. Now over time, if this was connected and disconnected enough times, you would get an intermittent or a bad connection out of this, and that could be a problem. So let's see if we can look at the other end. Uh, let's see, there we go. So there's the other end. And you can see a little bit right there. Yeah, you can just see it's um, just starting to kind of blacken, blacken it away, and it is actually pitting out that connection. I have some others. I wasn't able to find my other connectors. They're really nasty, but um, over time, this will just degrade the connection, and you'll get a bad connection, which is not good. So let's look at this off-start circuit. So here is a view of Copperhead from the back, which I haven't really shown all that much. If you look right here, this is the soft start switch, and I'll talk about that here in a second. And then um, right here and right here, we have the holes to access the uh, power switches for both, um, I don't know which one, I think um, this one's the weapon and this one's the drive. I can't see it from this angle. Um, so let's take off this top and I'll show you the guts. <laughs> Oh, come on. So here's the insides. This is going to be a little tricky to show you exactly what's going on. Um, I do have a schematic that I'll show you later to give you a better idea of the actual circuit itself. Um, let me just kind of move a few things out of the way. Um, this is the radio that is actually just Velcroed um, to the back end of this. So if anyone wants to hit Copperhead in exactly the right spot, um, here's a pretty good place to hit it, um, but you got to get around to the back to do that first. Normally the antenna wires come out through um, these little holes and are taped right there, so that's what the tape is for, um, but I don't have that right there. Okay, so if we get that out of the way a little bit, um, I might have to change camera angles here, but let me talk about the kind of battery compartment first. So you got the batteries right there. Um, we kind of have them in this little brick and they're wired um, basically positive, negative, positive, negative. So it gives us two kind of independent packs. We have um, 12S and 12S, five amp hour each. And it's kind of like a, eh, it's a little bit of a redundant pack, um, but generally speaking, we just have two reds and two blacks inside here, and this is just to run them in series. And the battery pack just sits inside this little compartment. And you can see that we have the um, two black wires, and they are just bust into this huge loom. Um, so that goes to all of the negatives everywhere. So there's um, three negatives here just because it has um, three inputs. This is the um, VESC for the weapon motor and there's actually three black inputs on it so it just kind of is bust in. And then these other wires over here go into the other VESCs back here for the drive. So that's where the wires two goes into one, two, three, four, five, and then one wire for the um, BEC which is somewhere in this mess. And then um, over here we have the red wires. We've got one and two, and these go into the center point of the switches. Let me change camera angles so that you can actually see down inside of there. Okay, so here's a little bit better look at everything, kinda, sorta. Um, if we look really closely here, um, the white stuff is just um, liquid electrical tape. So you can see that right here, these wires, let me move this out of the way. This barrel connector and this barrel connector right there, both of those just go directly into this bus in the middle. Um, so they go into the middle of the switches, and then when they're switched, they go out to the outside poles, and then those go and feed the, um, respectively, the weapon ESC and the drive ESCs. In the middle, there is a really small wire um, right here this little guy, 
and then you see this little black um, heat shrink nub on it right there that is a resistor so when we hit this switch the power comes from the batteries through the red wires into the middle of these two switches through a resistor into the switch and then there's two wires that come off of it one here and one on the other side that's tucked back here a little bit and then that goes to the other sides of the switch so basically this switch bridges the two Hayachi switches down there so when we hit this button power flows into the middle up into the switch through a resistor which helps resist the power coming into the switch and then out into two diodes and then down into the other switches the diodes are there to prevent one side from back feeding the other side we found early on that if we didn't have the diodes there you'd press the switch and there was a circuit then jumpering these two so it didn't matter if you had the weapon on or the drive on it would just basically bridge the two together um, so that was actually kind of important is to have a diode so the power couldn't go from one slide one side of the switch over to the other side and so the startup procedure is basically you hold this down for a second while holding it down turn on the switch turn on the other switch and then you can let go. It's really as simple as that. Um, but this switch basically slowly pre-charges everything. Then you can turn things on and you don't get that nice little loud pop. And here is a final look at the actual schematic. I took some time and made this a little bit prettier. I know it's a lot easier to just look into the bot and just, you know, trace all the wires and see how it all works. But yeah, I figured I'd give you the schematic just so you could look at that instead. Uh, but it's really pretty simple. There's not a lot going on. And I know some people are going to kind of scratch their heads and be like, well, what happens to the, you know, if the switch gets hit or something like that? Well, as you can see here, the switch is just completely in parallel with everything. So if you completely remove the switch and remove all of that circuit, circuitry, once the bot is actually on and the two Waiachi switches are turned on, the switch is completely irrelevant. It's not really in the circuit. It doesn't need to be on. No power is really feeding through that side of anything. It literally is just a switch that when you press it in, it pre-charges everything, gives power to the drive and the weapon stuff, just so it gets that nice little slow soft start and then once the actual switches are on it really actually does nothing the other nice thing about this switch is that if you're reprogramming the escs you know we have the vests in here you can actually use the pre-charge switch to power everything up safely uh, we can actually use the switch to just press it in it powers everything up and not enough current is ever going to go through this switch that's ever going to let the um, drive get activated or let the weapon drum get activated it's just enough to where we can program the vests, change some settings around, and we actually don't have to go through and make sure that the bot is, um, you know, wheels are lifted off or the weapon lock is on. It's just enough to get the um, programming kind of the logic going on the boards, and it's slow enough to where it charges the caps, but we don't have to worry about, you know, this thing being able to drive. We kind of did try driving it with just the um, soft start circuit on, and the vests don't like it. It just doesn't work like that. So. Anyway, here is the schematic, nice and simple. This video ended up being a lot longer than I initially thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be a nice quick little video, but it didn't end up being like that. But hopefully this video gives you a better idea of what this little button was on the back of Copperhead and what the soft start circuit actually looked like. I would really like to see a lot more videos like this or other content from other builders. Um, it is a very collaborative environment, but I feel a lot of times that other builders want to kind of keep their secrets close to them. And I would encourage you to not do that. I would encourage other builders to share as much as possible because the more sharing that we do, the fights are going to get better. They're going to get more competitive. There's going to be bigger hits. There's going to be, you know, just crazier fights. And this is only going to benefit the community and only benefit the actual sport itself. Think about this this way. If we have really solid fights, there's amazing knockouts, full three minute fights, the show's gonna get better, more people are gonna watch the show and it's gonna get more popular. You know, none of this is a bad thing. So I definitely encourage and challenge all other builders to, you know, open up your bot, make a video, show the little special sauce, show those little things that make your bot unique and as we all know, when it comes down to a combat robot, it's not about how big your drum is or how big your wheels are, or how much power you have. It's all the little details. It always comes down to the details. So just throwing that out there. As always, thanks for watching. Um, check out more videos coming up. And um, yeah, 
Thanks for watching. See you next time.